Hello guys, welcome back to Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the basics of structure design. In this lecture, we are going to follow some of the basic steps that are required for the design of any structure. So there are mainly nine important steps that to be followed for the design of any structure. The first one is the plan of a structure. This step is mostly carried by the architecture where he makes a plan for any structure or any building. The second step is type of a structure. So this includes that which type of structure you want to construct. It may be a concrete structure, it may be a concrete structure, a reinforced concrete structure, or it may be a steel structure, or it may be a wood structure. So, depends on the which type of material you want to use in a structure, we have all different types of a structure. So, this depends on the overall design of a structure, depends upon the economy of a structure, with which structure is more economical and which structure provides more safety for the construction. So, this step is the initiation of the construction of a structure. So, after deciding the type of a structure, the third step is the assuming the member size assuming the member size this includes the beam size and the column size these are the two important structure elements so beam size include it what should be the beam width and the depth of the beam also the column dimensions similarly the column width and the column depth it what number we should choose for the dimension of the beam and column and we should start our designing by choosing the beam dimension and column dimension so the second step after choosing the type of a structure it comes the assuming the structure member size the beam size and the column size the fourth step is the applying loads on the structure so the load applying loads on the structure it means that you have to take the dead load of the structure or the self weight of the structure the live load coming on the structure the snow load if it is in a snow region then you have to take the snow load you have to take the wind load on the structure if it is a taller structure so depending on where the your structure is you have to take the various kinds of the load and you also have to apply the load combination that which one is the worst load combination for your structure and you have to apply the load combination as well so after applying the loads the next step is the structure analysis in this step we perform the analysis on the structure members for example, we do the analysis for the shear, we do the analysis for the bending moment and we get the shear diagrams for the beams and also for the columns and also the bending moment diagram for the beams and columns and we have to check that how much, that how the bending moment changes in our structure and how the shear varies throughout our structure and according to this, we have to design our structure members. So after analyzing the structure members for the shear force and bending moment and also for the torsion and other type of stresses, so the next step comes is the structural design. Structural design and this step includes that how much area of reinforcement we have to provide to resist the various kind of stresses. Area of reinforcement and which type of bar we have to provide the bar diameter so that we can resist the shear or the bending or the torsion stresses so the sixth step is the design of the structural members the design of beam, the column, the slab and the footing so, so after the structure design the next step is check for the allowable limits And this mainly include the deflection limits. 
This means that we should calculate our deflection in our structure members and beams and we should compare with the limits provided by the different codes and our beam deflection should be less than the deflection given by the different codes. Otherwise, we have to repeat all the steps. If the this steps up to this step, if it is satisfied, so it's okay. If it is unsatisfied, if it is not satisfied, then we should again repeat these all steps. Then we should choose again increase the beam or the column size and we should repeat these all steps again by applying the loads, by structure analysis again, by again drawing the shear force and bending moment and again designing of the beam or column and providing the reinforcement and again we have to check for the allowable limit, the deflection of the beams, that how much it is higher or lower than the given limits provided by the codes. So after satisfying the allowable limits, then the next step would be if this is okay up to this step, then we have to go to the last step which is the detailing. And this step is more mainly for the ductility of our structure. We can increase the ductility of a structure by providing a good detailing of our structure members. If we provide the reinforcement in a good way in beam and columns, we can increase the ductility of a structure. So the last step is followed by the detailing of any structure members. For example, the beam we have to provide the reinforcement in a balanced way in our beam so that we increase the ductility of the beam. We should also provide the detailing in the column so that we have to good ductility in our column. For example, if this is any column, so we should provide the lifting in the center of the column. Also, if this is a beam, so we should detail, we should uh, we should overlap our beam not at the center but at the edges of the column. So there are some rules which should be followed in detailing. So the last step is followed by the detailing and it mainly affects the ductility of the structure. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.